All right, so today I'm going to attempt the unthinkable. I'm gonna get in my car and take you on a tour of the entire city of Portland before sundown. We're gonna start in the Northwest and make our way in a clockwise direction all around the entire city. We're gonna cover every quadrant and oh, about 25 different neighborhoods. I'll talk about different amenities each spot has to offer. We'll look at some homes. We'll talk real estate prices. We'll talk walkability. And no, we don't protest every single day about the affordability of avocado toast in brunch places. Huh, that's all it took? All right, I guess I'm not surprised in 2024. So before we get into the nitty gritty, we gotta get our bearings straight. The city is divided east to west by the beautiful Willamette River and has 94 neighborhoods. So unless you're that puzzle piece that got chewed up by the dog, there's likely a place for you to fit in. All jokes aside, I don't wanna tell you what to do because I'm not your mom, or am I? But if you're planning a move to the Portland metro area, make sure you reach out via call, text, email, or just scheduling a video call is honestly the best bet. I love when people find these videos and like and subscribe and all that jazz. But even more than that, I love it when you guys just get in touch with me and have me help with the move up here and help you buy that perfect home. Also, I love cheese. All my contact information is right down below this video, so don't be shy. All right, now go clean your room. All right, so we are gonna start up in the beautiful Northwest part of Portland, which has a little bit of everything. Northwest Portland is home to some of the finest shopping and the most dense urban areas in the city with neighborhoods like the Pearl District, which is where I am now, the Alphabet District and Slab Town. Northwest Portland is home to some of the most walkable parts of Portland. There's endless bars, shops, restaurants, and businesses to get pretty much everything and anything you need to get done on foot. The Pearl, Slap Town, and Alphabet District all have a walk score of nearly 100 out of 100, which I promise you is going to be more impressive than getting that perfect score on Family Feud. I digress. The awesome streets you're gonna to wanna to check out in the Northwest are 21st and 23rd, and pretty much any streets in the Pearl are great to explore, but the types of housing you can expect to find here are condos for the most part. Condos, pretty much as far as the eye can see. You can find condos for truly any price range in the Northwest. That's kind of the beauty of this area. Typically, they'll start in the 200,000 range and go well up into the 1 million and up range for something that's extra fancy. This is just a great area for those those of you who don't want to worry about telling the youngsters to get off your lawn. <laughs> but if you do enjoy yelling at teenagers, there are definitely some single family homes as you move into the western part of the northwest and go up into the hills. Pretty much the majority that's west of 23rd Avenue is going to be residential single family homes and you're getting into neighborhoods like Kings Heights, Hillside, Willamette Heights, and Forest Park. The really cool thing about these areas is the homes are rather large and luxurious. Lots of restored historic homes that sit atop a hill where you can overlook the city or many of which are either pretty close to Forest Park, which by the way is the largest urban forested park in the country, which I'll talk about in a sec, but the homes in these areas to the west part of the Northwest Quadrant are million, sometimes multi-million dollar homes, which are truly some of the nicest real estate in all of Portland, but easily some of the most expensive too, which comes with a downside that these neighborhoods will be much more car dependent than the rest of Northwest Portland. If you choose to reside in one of these lovely neighborhoods, you will have a luxurious and beautiful home in a quiet neighborhood, but you won't have the luxury of walking to that hot yoga studio or the local brunch spot. Like I said before though, you do have the luxury of being very close to Forest Park, which actually makes up most of Northwest Portland in terms of square footage. This is 5,200 acres of forested land with over 80 miles of hiking trails throughout the park. There's tons of hiking you can do. There's creeks that run through it and lots of old growth trees. It's called Forest Park for a reason. And as soon as you step foot in it, I think you'll get it. You may forget that you are even in the city, kind of like when you forget where you parked your car. Where did I park my car? Overall, North Portland is completely different from Northwest Portland. It's going to feel much less dense and less vertical and just means that you won't see as many tall condo or apartment buildings and, and you're gonna have a much more neighborhood-like feel. This is where you're gonna see tons of classic Portland bungalows and detached single family homes from the early 1900s. Thing to know about this area is that it's going to be generally more affordable than other quadrants of Portland when it comes to buying a house 
house. And there's a few different neighborhoods to highlight here, such as St. John's, which has a median home price of 440,000. And Boise, which is where I'm standing now, is 465,000. There's Kenton, and which has a median home price of 450. So if you're coming from the Northwest, you'd hop on the 405 freeway. Don't be triggered, LA people. It's great in comparison to the 405 you have, which always makes me feel like Ace Ventura when I'm driving on it with no traffic at least. So you would cross the Fremont Bridge, putting you right at the base of one of my favorite parts of Portland, which is in fact the Boise neighborhood. The Boise neighborhood is an awesome neighborhood, which just happens to be the place that made me fall in love with Portland. You could say it was love at first sight. It's the perfect example of what's all over Portland on the east side of the Willamette River, which is many different neighborhoods with a perfect mix of residential, quiet streets surrounding some sort of main downtown-like street with all the exciting stuff to do. In this particular neighborhood, the street that is the standout busy street is going to be, without a doubt, Mississippi Avenue, which is where I am now. It's the perfect strip of restaurants and cafes and shops, and there's even some food carts right here, and even one of Portland's coolest music venues, uh, which is Mississippi Studios. As someone who first moved here from Los Angeles, which is definitely not a very walkable city in general, I was blown away by the fact that one street could be a quiet, beautiful street with a bunch of really cool houses and trees. And then one block over was Mississippi, where I was taken to a restaurant, followed by some bars. And then, well, I think you know where this goes from here. <laughs> But really, I thought this was just a really cool, unique area of Portland. And as I learned more and I explored more of Portland, and the more you will learn, the more you watch this video, is that it's not that unique in the fact that there are little pockets like this all over the city, quiet residential streets and a main street with all that fun stuff going on. Also, just a few blocks to the east, you've got North Williams and North Vancouver Avenue, which is a very busy stretch of streets with all sorts of spots. There's Life of Pie Pizza, places to get sandwiches, salads, ramen, lots and lots of options. And of course, there's a New Seasons too, which is without a doubt the best grocery store to shop at in Portland. Another great neighborhood in North Portland, as I mentioned above, is St. John's. St. John's is all the way up in the very top corner of the city, and it's really great because it almost feels like a town of its own. It's a little bit disconnected from the rest of the city, but it's got a great little downtown area, nice neighborhoods, several great restaurants and cafes and shops, and whew, it's getting bright. Anyways, as I was saying, quaint little neighborhood up here. It's really nice, super walkable. As I mentioned before, the median home price of a home up here in St. John's is 440,000, which is about 100,000 below the median price for Portland. You also find a lot of smaller homes here. So if you're looking for something a little bit more modest, like something a thousand square feet or one or two bedrooms, you're gonna be able to find that up here in St. John's a lot more than the rest of Portland. It's also home to one of the most beautiful riverfront parks in all of Portland, which is Cathedral Park. With scenic views of the majestic St. John's Bridge and Forest Park off in the background on the other side of the river. It's a pretty amazing spot to have access to when you're living up here in St. John's. There's a boat dock over there, so if you want to go kayaking or boating on the river, this is a very great spot to have access to those types of water activities. Now, before we cross into the Northeast, let's check out a couple more neighborhoods up here in North Portland. All right, so now we're up in Kenton, which like many other neighborhoods in Portland is quite understated and has a healthy sprinkling of businesses and quiet residential parts too. Kenton is developing a little bit behind areas like the Pearl and Mississippi, but it's becoming one of the most up and coming neighborhoods around. And as I mentioned before, real estate is still very affordable here. Around 450K is the median price of a home. Another benefit to living in the Kenton area is its location. Even though it's located all the way at the northern edge of Portland, you can go downtown in under 10 minutes typically, and you're very close to the Mississippi neighborhood, Alberta district, which I'll talk about in the next segment. And you can also get to the Portland airport in just about 15 minutes. There's also a MAX station, which is the local train system. Let's go take a look at some of the Kenton residential neighborhood before we head over to the last North Portland spot.
So this other neighborhood that is definitely worth exploring is Arbor Lodge. It tends to get skipped over when people are considering a move to Portland because people always want that super walkable neighborhood with all the shops and stuff. But Arbor Lodge is almost like a little bit of an oasis in Portland. And it's unique because while the appeal of many of the Portland neighborhoods is in fact that it features a busy neighborhood, almost like a downtown area, Arbor Lodge is a bit more low key and spread out and peaceful and mostly residential, which could honestly honestly be appealing to many people. So that is why I'm covering it here. There are parts of it that are more walkable to shops and businesses the closer you get to Lombard Street. This is a slightly higher price point with a median home price of 540,000. But you can find listings here that range from the 200 to 400,000 range for a small condo or townhome. And then the three to four bedroom single family houses will be in the 500 to 800,000 price range. There is of course the Arbor Lodge Park which is almost nine acres has a great natural play area for the kids as well as tennis courts walking paths picnic tables as well as a designated off-leash area for the pups to get their strides in it is such a lovely and quiet area that's super appropriate for families there's also a new seasons right in Arbor Lodge which like I mentioned before is the best place to shop for groceries in Portland if you aren't in the know it's similar to Whole Foods but more Pacific Northwest centric with local seasonal produce that cycles through throughout the year. This neighborhood has convenient access to pretty much any other part of the city you might want to get to as well. It's also nearby the Adidas headquarters, so this neighborhood should definitely be on your radar if you're working there. All right, putting my jacket back on, it's getting a little windy. So now that we've covered Northwest Portland as well as North Portland, it's time that we dive into the moment you've all been waiting for. Northeast Portland. But before we do, you gotta understand that this is a very large area. There are truly so many neighborhoods that stretch from the river all the way to 162nd Avenue or so. I'm not gonna be able to touch on all of them, but I'll do my best to give a good variety and hopefully give you a good picture of the Northeast. There's about as many different neighborhoods in Northeast Portland alone as there are ways to improperly pronounced Willamette. This one really confuses some newcomers to the area. It's not Willamette, it's not Willamette, it's Willamette damn it. Now you can't talk about Northeast Portland without talking about the Alberta district. This is right smack dab in the heart of Northeast Portland. It's just a pretty awesome area. It's similar to the Mississippi area where we talked about before. This one is just one long street, chock full of places to eat, shop, drink, do yoga, massage, drink smoothies, and just be happy. Take a turn to the north or south and like everywhere else in Portland. What do you have? Quiet residential streets. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Now this is kind of cheating because all of the Alberta Arts District is technically not a neighborhood, but it's made up of three different neighborhoods, which are King, Vernon, and Concordia. In the King section of Alberta is where you'll find the most affordable homes with a median home price of 469,000. Then in the middle section is Vernon, Ooh. which has a median home price of 541,000. And then Concordia to the east side is going to be the most pricey with a median home price of 647,000. Some highlight places to check out all along Alberta Street in include Tin Shed Cafe, which is a great brunch spot, as well as Proud Mary, which is also an excellent coffee roaster with top-notch brunch. Then there's, of course, a Bamboo Sushi, which is Portland's sustainable sushi restaurant. There's other coffee spots. One of my favorite is Case Study. Then, let's see, there's also a Matt's Barbecue Tacos on Alberta. And I'm talking all about food, but you gotta go to the Alberta Street Pub, of course, to see some live music. It's just a great place to hang out to, and they've got a great patio area. I made a whole video on just the Alberta Alberta district and there is a link to that down below as well as some other neighborhoods I've already talked about in this video so make sure you check those out as well after this video is through. Let's go to the next spot. All right, now we talked about the Northwest Hills neighborhood at the beginning of this video, but this neighborhood that I'm standing in now is similar with its luxurious and high-end feel, but it's in the center of Northeast Portland. Alameda is another kind of quiet, less walkable neighborhood in the midst of it all, but you have some of the most beautiful homes around sitting on tranquil, low-trafficked, tree-lined streets. Alameda gives residents a feeling of privacy and luxury and, and peace while also having the convenience of being very 
really close to other neighborhoods with lots of amenities like Beaumont Wilshire, which is just to the east, Alberta to the north, Hollywood to the southeast, and Laurelhurst to the south. You also have easy access to I-84, which will take you into downtown or the suburbs to the west or to the east and to the Columbia River Gorge. The median sales price of homes in this area is $775,000, and you'll generally find large single family homes that range from the 600s that go up to a million and above. It's definitely an area to check out if you are in the market for a home that's nice and an area that's quiet and a little bit fancier than the rest. And if you're really lucky, you might get a house that is up on the hill and has a great view of the city. I mean, do you hear how quiet that is here? As a transition point into the Southeast Portland neighborhood, we are going to take a look at Montevilla now because, well, it's both Northeast and Southeast Portland. Right here, I'm still in the Northeast section and I love this neighborhood. I'm a little bit biased because I used to live here for several years. It's really conveniently located because up on Gleason, there's several coffee shops to enjoy and there's a really am amazing German bakery. It's also got a lot of really flat terrain, so it's easy to take the kids for a walk and it has a low median home price of 430000 This part, specifically the houses that I'm walking around next to, they're probably going to be closer to the five, 600 range. And Montevilla actually means Mount Tabor Village. And directly to the south of Montevilla is, well, Mount Tabor, which I haven't actually talked about in this video. You see behind me where the trees kind of go up and there's some elevation gain, that is Mount Tabor. I've talked about it a lot on this channel. It's basically a huge park in the middle of the city atop an extinct volcano. It extends about 650 feet in elevation gain and there's trails for hiking, a kids play area, basketball courts, and a beautiful view from the top. And that's a lovely neighborhood over there, the Mount Tabor neighborhood. But here, this is Montevilla, Mount Tabor Village. Really great neighborhood to check out. Slightly less walkable than other neighborhoods, but there is a really cool kind of downtown area that I'll show you next. If you cross Burnside, boom, you're all of a sudden in Southeast Portland. And over here is where you have your busier neighborhood stretch, which in this case is Southeast Stark from about 82nd all the way up to 76th or so. You've got a movie theater, some really great restaurants, ice cream, yoga studios, children's clothing stores, bakeries. There's a hardware store, you name it. There's even a farmer's market that takes place in this area as well. All around really great Southeast Portland neighborhood. So we're gonna highlight actually two different neighborhoods next, Sunnyside and Richmond. These two neighborhoods are very similar and kind of blend together. They really are the absolute heart of Southeast Portland with three exciting main streets running through them, which are Belmont, Hawthorne, and Division. These streets are lined with buildings that are mixed use, which are commercial on the ground level. So shops of all kinds, restaurants, bars, etc., and residential above them. In any direction, north or south of those streets though, you guessed it, quiet charming neighborhoods with your quintessential early 1900s built homes on streets like the one that I'm walking on right now. If you are looking for that classic Portland experience of living in a house on a quiet street but being able to walk to take care of any errands or to grab a drink or a bite to eat then one of these neighborhoods is definitely the spot to check out. There's also of course condos and apartments here as well especially along those busy streets. I currently live in Richmond and I absolutely love it. Super easy access to Mount Tabor Park from here or basically any other part of Portland. The median home price in Richmond is $625,000 and the median home price of Sunnyside is $670,000. So a bit above the rest of Portland, but I think if you spent even just a few hours walking around here, you will start to understand why these are higher demand areas. Again, I've made complete videos about these areas that you can check out and I've left links for you to check out down in the description, but keep watching because I got some other cool stuff to show you in this video. Uh, another neighborhood that's definitely worth checking out is Woodstock. Woodstock Boulevard here is a stretch of businesses with all the grocery stores you could need and that has changed in recent years. Previously it used to be much more quiet and mostly residential similar to Arbor Lodge for example in the northeast but there is a New Seasons right behind me and a Safeway right on the other side of the street and a decent stretch of other types of options for you to check out. It's also 
very affordable and well below the median home price of the rest of Portland and other neighborhoods like Richmond and Sunnyside at 410,000, which is the median home price. There's a mix of super old but updated homes as well as newer construction here. There's also several small parks throughout Woodstock, including of course Woodstock Park, which is just a pretty big one. Just about 15 minutes to downtown, about 20 minutes to the airport. Pretty great location of Woodstock. And while I'm over here, there's also another neighborhood next to Woodstock called Brentwood Darlington, which is definitely changing rapidly. There's a good mix of old and new there because many older homes are being torn down and new homes are being built. It's still a very affordable neighborhood with a median price of 395,000. It's not super walkable, but that could start to change in the next five to eight years as more new businesses get built there. And then next to Brentwood Darlington is Lentz, which is even more affordable at a median home price of 387,000 and lots of affordable housing. It's already an up and coming area that has been transformed greatly in the last 15 years. There's tons of gems for food and drinks there with restaurants of all kinds, but with a slight emphasis on Asian food, Lentz Park is also home to where the Portland Pickles play, which is Portland's beloved collegiate summer baseball team. Definitely very fun to attend Pickles games if you are a baseball fan like me. Now, before we cross back over the river, we gotta mention at least one more great neighborhood, which is Selwood Moreland. It's one square mile of quaint homes and walkable flat streets. It's right on the river with a massive riverfront park. It's got an amusement park. It's got a nature park. It's got a scenic wildlife refuge. Some of my favorite restaurants are in Selwood. And to be honest, it's definitely a neighborhood that I personally would love to live in if I had to pick a different neighborhood besides the one I live in now, of course, there's a new seasons that way, as well as other grocery stores. So it's really got everything that you need. There's any type of housing available here, whether you want the low maintenance lifestyle of a condo, a townhome, as well as single family detached homes. The median price here is slightly high, but reasonable at 585,000. It used to be its own town here before it was incorporated into Portland. So that's why it has the feel of being its own town. Great neighborhood and make sure you watch the video I did a while back on Selwood. Links down in the description. Now, finally, we shall cross back over the Willamette River into Southwest Portland. This, similarly to Northwest Portland, has a hugely diverse mix of neighborhoods. You've got your almost suburban neighborhood feel of Multnomah Village. You've got the stunning and luxurious Southwest Hills. You've got the urban professional feel of South Waterfront. And you've got the busy, dense downtown Portland here, which is also home to Portland State University. So now we're gonna start off right here in South Portland, which has a few different options for you. Right here is the neighborhood of South Waterfront, which is home to the main OHSU campus or Oregon Health and Science University. There's over 5,000 students at OHSU and over 21,000 employees, making it the largest employer in Oregon. So if you are in the medical field and you're thinking of a move here to Portland, well, you wouldn't be alone. Many of the medical students or staff reside here in the South Waterfront neighborhood, but it's also really easy to commute here from even the Pearl, for example, by using the streetcars. As you can see, we've got a lot of tall high-rise buildings with condos and apartment style living. Condos range anywhere from 200K on up to one or 1.1 million. So now we're here in the heart of Southwest Portland in the wonderful neighborhood of Multnomah Village. It has a nice mix of gentle hills, classic detached homes, and again, it just has that small town charm like many other neighborhoods in Portland. This is the type of neighborhood where you can explore galleries, have a cup of coffee or brunch to start off your day, buy some antiques or some toys at the local toy store, then grab a beer from John's Marketplace and finish off the evening with a nice sushi dinner somewhere somewhere or wood-fired pizza place and even grab an ice cream for dessert without even needing to get in your car. There are seriously so many different unique spots to enjoy and explore if you're into checking out different businesses and places to eat from fine dining to food carts and everything in between. This is a great neighborhood because it almost feels similar to the suburbs except the downtown area is more Portland centric with, with character rather than strip mall vibes that you get in the actual suburbs. 
homes. The median home price is 670,000, but you can find listings for move-in ready homes here anywhere from 300 on up to 800,000. You are conveniently located less than 10 minutes from downtown Portland and also under 15 minutes to downtown Beaverton, which is a great suburb just to the west of Portland. This here is Gabriel Park, which is a 90 acre park entirely within the neighborhood of Multnomah Village. It's got a 10,000 square foot skate park, children's play area, baseball fields, tennis courts, soccer fields, unpaved and paved paths, tons of trees. I mean, this park literally has it all. Shoot, I'm making myself want to move to Multnomah Village. All right, we're losing daylight, but I've got a couple more really special spots to show you, so stay with me. And so if money is no issue and you want to live in another one of the most prestigious neighborhoods in all of Portland and value having great panoramic views and access to incredible nature, then the Southwest Hills and Portland Heights neighborhoods should definitely be on your radar because homes here come with insane views of the city and there are three excellent parks intertwined within these hills. First is Council Crest Park, which is where I am now. Uh, then there's Washington Park, which is the crown jewel of Portland is home to so many incredible gems, including the Portland Zoo, the International Rose Test Garden, the Japanese Garden, Hoyt Arboretum, and miles and miles of trails. It's 410 acres of just pure beauty. The homes in this area rarely sell below 1 million, but you'll see something in the high 800 to 900 range occasionally and can go as high as 8 million. But the median home price here is about 1.1 million. And you can be in downtown Portland in less than 10 minutes, depending on what part of the neighborhood you live in. And similar to Northwest Hills neighborhoods we covered earlier in the video, this part of town is definitely going to be much more car dependent. It's an absolutely beautiful place to live. If if you can afford it and if you can't it's still worth coming up here sometimes because the views are pretty stunning even this little guy likes it we did almost a full circle all around Portland and we're back where the whole place began. Downtown Portland is home to so many different great restaurants and it's home to Portland State University or PSU. And this is this is the area for those of you who enjoy the urban lifestyle. It has drawn the most attention in recent years due to the riots that were happening in 2020. Most of those occurred here in Southwest Portland and certain parts of downtown, but downtown Portland also has one of the greatest farmer's markets that occurs every Saturday, rain or shine, year round, and it's just a great place to live if you enjoy that walkable lifestyle. There's so many great shopping spots throughout downtown Portland, a vast amount of food options, but you know, hey, it's downtown. You aren't really gonna find any houses, just kind of high rise condo type buildings and apartment living. There are more homeless people than most other parts of Portland, and that's something that is rather unfortunate for everyone. And so now that you've made it through to this point, I'd recommend checking Checking out this playlist right here where I take you on even more in-depth tours of some of the great neighborhoods I've highlighted in this video. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you over there.